Cuban coffee goes by many names. Cafecito, Cafe Cubano, or what I like to refer to it as, Jet Fuel. I am not kidding. I have drinking an entire one of these coladas and I was wired. It is great for getting things done. It is great for going out clubbing, but be careful because you cannot sleep. <laughs> so just drink one of these little shots and you'll be fine. One of these tiny little shot glasses is actually the equivalent of a full cup of coffee. So there is a lot of caffeine in here. Cuban exiles moved here in the 1960s. Fleeing communism, they found refuge in Miami and brought along their culture with them. The funny part is, due to the U.S. and Cuba's trade restrictions, Cuban coffee isn't actually from Cuba. Rather, it is a styled espresso typically served up with pastries, cigars, and dominoes. You don't have to live in Miami to be able to make Cuban coffee. I'm going to show you how to make it in your own kitchen using simple ingredients that you can get from your local grocery store. First and foremost, you need high quality espresso grounds. Today, we'll be using Cafe La Careta from Miami's most famous Cuban restaurant, La Careta. We also recommend using Quilon, Cafe Ayave, and Cafe Bustelo. These are all great espresso recommendations that can be found online or at your local grocery store. You can make Cuban coffee with a cafetera, mocha pot, or espresso machine. Today, we're gonna to be demonstrating with a stovetop version, as well as an electric model. You're gonna to wanna to take this top compartment off, and then you will see there is a basket. This is where the coffee grounds go. And then you just wanna fill this up to this water line right here. Take your basket, and then you're just gonna fill it with coffee grounds. I use this little container just to catch anything underneath so I don't make a mess. And the overall goal is to pack this as tight as physically possible. Therefore, you get the maximum amount of caffeine per shot. You can use your finger or the end of a spoon. You can see it is very tightly packed. Now I'm just gonna drop it in. Screw on the top. And turn it on. This is what gives Cuban coffee its distinctive sweet taste. We take sugar, we add it to this mixing container, and then we collect the first couple drops of the espresso into here, and we mix it for about two to five minutes. This creates what we call espumita, a sugary foam that sits on top of the coffee. Then you want to take the contents of your coffee and just pour it right in there. Give it one last mix and then you are ready to pour. Notice the espumita at the top, that is all sugar, which makes it very sweet. Cheers! Alright, we're going to be using a stovetop cafetera. Right, so you take it. Screw the top off. This is just like the electric model. You're gonna see this little container. So when you take your coffee grounds and fill this as tightly as possible. I have a little container underneath to catch any excess, like I mentioned before. Perfectly tight again. Underneath. Screw the tip on. Turn the stove on. Now that the stove's on, you're gonna wait about five minutes for this water to evaporate through the coffee grounds up into this top container, and then you're gonna start seeing the espresso uh, bubbling at the top. That's when you know it is ready to pour. Take a look. There's coffee being made. All right, like I had mentioned, you want to take the first couple drops, pour it into the sugar. This is going to make the espumita. 
This cafeteria actually has a smaller basket and water compartment, so we made slightly less cubing coffee, which is great for personal sizes. Terminology time! A full cup of Cuban coffee is called a colada, while a single shot is called cafecito. Then we have cafe con leche, which is the American equivalent of a latte. The smaller version of that is called a cortadito, which is sometimes even made with condensed milk for an added sweetness. 